Presenting Robert Cummings and Jane Wyatt as Mr. and Mrs. Blandings. Mr. and Mrs. Blandings, a comedy series based on Eric Hodgins' best-selling novels, Mr. Blandings Builds His Dream House and Blandings Way, starring Robert Cummings and Jane Wyatt, with Larry Keating as Bill Cole. Tonight, Jim and Muriel Blandings are going to have an anniversary dinner. For it was exactly one year ago this very evening that the Blandings first moved into their dream house in Lansdale, Connecticut. The dining room is a scene of elaborate preparation. The monogram silver gleams against the soft satin damask cloth. The crystal goblets reflect Muriel's warm smile as she surveys the table. There's an aromatic hint of rich, fine food coming from the kitchen. And then suddenly... Maude, what happened? I think I dropped the mashed potatoes. Oh. <laughs> don't tell me they were in my good china bowl. Okay, but don't be surprised if you find some spode in your spuds. <laughs> well, I suppose it couldn't be helped. Nope, nope, it couldn't. Uh, shall I light the candles, Miss Blanding? Oh, no, no, we'll wait until Mr. Blanding's arrives with Mr. Cole. Land's sakes. I just can't get over that tablecloth. Pink satin. Seems a terrible waste. Waste? You ought to cut armholes in it and wear it. <laughs> it's too sexy to spill gravy on. <laughs> Don't get carried away, Maud. Yeah, we certainly are making a terrible fuss, what with just Mr. Cole coming over. But this is a very special occasion, Maud. It was just a year ago today that we moved into this house. Well, people don't make this much how to do. Oh, this house means a lot to us, Maud. We planned and planned for it. Every detail represents hours of loving care. That reminds me, the sink is stopped up. <laughs> Same thing might happen to you. What? <laughs> Lord, I, I was explaining how important this dinner is tonight. Oh. It represents a victory. But it didn't start out to be one. But how do you mean? Oh, I remember it all very vividly. The day we moved here... We started out about five in the evening. We closed the door of our New York apartment for the last time. We were a little nervous, not too sure of ourselves, but we piled Joan and Susan into the car, picked up Bill Cole, and started out. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. 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 Mm. I never realized the beauty of that word until today. There's a big, new, beautiful house just a few minutes away. But until we get there, it's just a house. It's not a home. Because, because we're bringing something with us, something that's, that's in this car right now. For instance? Love. The, the love I have for you, Muriel, and for the kids. And Bill, my affection, my deep, lifelong affection for you. I'm hungry. <laughs> yep, yep, that, that's what makes a home, Muriel the, the feeling that's in this car right now And do you know what happens if you remember such moments as this? Oh, a cheeseburger would be nice mm. <laughs> Susan, this is a very memorable occasion When you're very old ladies, you and Joan Oh, with lots of onions and ketchup uh, Joan, uh, when you and Susan are very old ladies And relish, I like plenty of relish That's my girl I'm sorry, Jim, what were you saying? Uh, just forget it. No, no, no. What was it? If you remember such moments as this, it will make you a very happy old lady. I think my analyst has other plans. <laughs> What's an analyst? Oh, it's a man with a couch who explains to you that all your troubles are because you hate your mother. Well, what if you're an orphan? Well, then he blames the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can scoff, but I know the value of analysis. Look at Harry Roberts. Before he hit the couch, he was a nervous wreck and weighed 110 pounds. Now he weighs 190. What'd he do, eat the analyst? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
<laughs> Jim, should it take this long to get there? I thought we'd be able to see our land by now. Oh, we will, just as soon as we get around this bend. We'll see our house, our new house, just as soon as we round this curve. Jim, don't you think we'd better check the road map? Uh, what road map? You mean you haven't got a road map? Uh, look, my darling, I was a navigation instructor during the last war. Now, just put your faith in me. You're in good hands. If you don't believe me, there's the North Star. Now are you satisfied? All right. We know where the North Star is, but where are we? Well, somewhere underneath it. <laughs> somewhere underneath it. Susan made a funny. <laughs> yes, I'll remind her of it next Christmas with an empty stocking. She's getting... <laughs> oh, 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 there it is. There it is. Now, with no help from any of you, I've brought us to our new home. I, I don't see it. You will, just as soon as we round this curve. <laughs> Now, I don't even see the North Star. <laughs> That's very good, Muriel. <laughs> Bill, will you kindly keep out of this? Miss Larson says it's bad form to undermine somebody's faith in something. Miss Larson says, live and let live. Uh, Susan, just for future reference, Miss Larson and all of her sayings bore the living binderschlag out of me. Living <laughs> <laughs> binderschlag? <laughs> yeah, stick with me, Joan. Laughs every foot of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know what? We're going in circles. People who are lost go in circles. People who are on foot and who are lost in the forest sometimes go in circles. We are in a car. What happens to people in cars? They run out of gas. When they get out to go for more, they get lost and walk in circles. Uh, Bill, uh, what does your analyst charge for women? <laughs> he doesn't provide any. I have to furnish my own. <laughs> I'm beginning to freeze back here. Mm -hmm. Suppose I open this bottle of brandy and take a little sip. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, my father-in-law gave me that brandy the day Muriel and I were married. Just a sip. No. What's the matter? If you give Muriel back, do you have to return the bottle? <laughs> now, listen. He asked me to keep it until we were seated in front of our fireplace in our home. Not one single drop until then. Well, all right. But slow down if we pass the St. Bernard. <laughs> Now, come on, we're almost there. Let's enjoy the trip. Everybody sing. Come on. And be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Home. I'm beginning to believe there's no place like home. Oh, that's right. Stick up for Bill. But you're going to feel mighty foolish in a minute. There's something very familiar about this stretch of road here. I know. It's that white line running down the middle. <laughs> Let me see. Haven't I seen that someplace before? Oh, that's I'm... very, very witty. But you just wait. I'm sure this time, just as soon as we round this curve, you'll you'll see our home. That's your house. My, what an attractive style. What is it? Early Standard Oil? <laughs> now, Bill, I, I don't. Miss Larson says if we're lost, we can always find north by looking at a tree. Moss grows on the north side of the tree. Yeah, well, it also grows on Miss Larson. <laughs> anyway, I'm not lost. I never get lost. You're always getting lost. Muriel, I challenge that statement. I challenge your statement. Well, what about the time you walked over to your grandmother's and the police had to take you home? Well, well, I was just a mere child. That doesn't count. And the time you got lost in the circus grounds? Well, that, that wasn't... And uh, what about that college picnic where they had to send out a searching party for you and that girl? Muriel, believe me, that time I was not lost. <laughs> Now, let's stop all this. Now, this is a happy occasion. In a few minutes, we'll be in our new home with a beautiful fire burning and our dog lying at our feet. What dog? Oh, gee. Yes, I, I, I meant that to be a surprise. You see, the real estate man is waiting for us with a good farm dog, uh, a dog to take care of us, to keep strangers away. I hope it's a St. Bernard. A loaded St. Bernard. <laughs> hey, look, 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 over the crest of the hill. You can see the lights, the lights of our house. Ha, 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 ha. I couldn't navigate, could I? I needed road maps, did I? Well, take a good look, Cole. What do you see? Tell me. What do you see? Shrunk's Motel. Vacancy. <laughs> well. Jim. 
Jim, don't step on the gas like that. I'm in hock for the next 30 years for a place I can't even find. Jim, the road is slippery. Stop, please. Oh, you're driving me out of my mind. Please stop here and ask somebody. All right. We'll stop. See how that works. Evening. Evening, ma'am. Jim, uh... Let me handle this. I know these Connecticut people. Uh, Bill, Bill, you'll handle a thick ear if you don't keep out of this. How many cabins do you want? Cabins? Oh, oh none, thank you. I, I was just wondering if you could give me some information. Well, sir, I'd be glad to. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm looking for the old Crackett property. Who are you? Uh, Blandings is my name. We, uh, we see... Uh, this Miss Blandings? Yes, I am. These your daughters? Yes, they are. Who's the other fellow? Oh, that's Mr. Cole. He's a lawyer. Thought so. He's one of them sneaky, neat fellas. Hey, you're so right. No, oh, I know the type. You can't trust him. Probably goes around wearing two-part underwear. <laughs> Look. Uh, please, I, 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 I wonder if you could just give me some information. Well, sir, I'd be glad to. <laughs> oh, fine. I'm looking for the old Crackett property. But you said your name was Blandings. Well, it is. I, I happen to own the old Crackett property. I, I bought it, you see. Oh, a likely story. <laughs> How'd you buy it if you can't find it? <laughs> Don't try to goose grease me. <laughs> Look, please, uh, all, all I want is some information. I'll tell you what. It's getting me pretty dark for folks to go terry hooting through the back roads here. How'd you like to rent a cabin for the night? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Well, uh... Care to stop over for dinner, then? Uh, no, no. How'd you like to buy a nice hook rug? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Souvenir postcard? No, no. Care to swap knives? <laughs> Look, please, please, I... I'll tell you what. Give me a nickel, I'll give you a key to the restroom. Look, I'm, I'm just trying to find the old Crackett place. All I want to know is where is the old Crackett place? Oh, you're looking for the old Crackett place. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> well, last, now where is it? Yeah, do I know. <laughs> Thanks very much for the information. Oh, any time. That's what we're here for. <laughs> well, so long, and don't forget the name, Shrunks. I won't, and good luck to you. And next time you hook a rub, rug, I hope you get caught at it. I feel as though I've been sitting in this car since I was a little boy. Well, you're not chained to the seat, you know. I'm getting pretty tired of all this criticism. Nobody cooperates. I've sacrificed for our new home. I've done without a lot of things. I wanted a new pipe rack and didn't buy it just to save money. I wanted a Tyrolean hat with a brush in it. Did I buy that? No. I wanted a convoy coat. Did I buy that? No. And is anybody grateful? No. Oh, the thought of a full-grown man having to do without a Tyrolean hat with a brush in it is just too overwhelming for me. <laughs> Muriel, I'm going to get out here and stake myself to some of Shrunk's hospitality. You'll excuse me, won't you? Gladly. Oh, Jim. Jim, how could you? To Bill, of all people. Oh, I know you take your take up for his side. Maybe you're sorry you didn't stay his girl instead of marrying me. Go on, why didn't you say it? I'm not going to say one darn thing. I'm tired of talking, and, and I'm tired of singing There's No Place Like Home. I'm going to spend the night here at Shrunk's, too, with the children. Well, they're beginning to shiver. Well, so am I. Then aren't you going to, to come with us? No. No, I have a house somewhere around here. <laughs> yes, I have a big, empty old house. I'll find it somehow, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be all right. Uh, go, go, go with your mother, children. Don't worry about me. Go ahead, Muriel. Here, let me open the door for you. <clears throat> Susan, you go with Mama. Somebody has to stay with Dad. Well, all right, Jim. Well, what are you waiting for? Go on, it's all right. As you will. Come on, Susan. Well, Johnny, just you and me, huh? It's like King Lear. That's what it's like. <laughs> Daddy. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't look so sad. We'll have a fine time. We'll be in our new house in a few minutes. I bet it's just around the curve. You'll see. It'll be great. Come on, Joni. Sing with me. Come on. And be it ever so... Joni, come on. Come on. Sing, sing. Be it ever so... 
There's no place like home. You are listening to a new series starring Robert Cummings and Jane Wyatt as Mr. and Mrs. Blandings. And now, for the second act of our play. While preparing to celebrate the first anniversary of the Dream House, Muriel Blandings is telling Maud of the day one year ago when they left the city to drive to their new home in Connecticut. So far in her story, the travelers have lost their way, their tempers, and Jim has lost most of his party. Muriel, daughter Susan, and their friend Bill Cole have taken refuge in a motel. But Jim and daughter Joan, tight-lipped and grim, are still searching. But wait, they're both tight-lipped. And yet a voice is heard. It says, Jim Blandings, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Huh? Who was that? You're stubborn and thoughtless. You knew you'd lost your way. You knew your little family was tired and exhausted. But did you stay with them, help them? No. You were pig-headed. <laughs> yes, you pushed on doing what you wanted to do. It's, it's not that way at all. Now, now leave me alone. You always hurt the one. Oh, shut up. Now, go on, beat it, you little imp. You don't think I can climb the house, huh? Well, I, I think I can. I've got a right to an opinion. You have not. You're married. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Now, run along, will you? Daddy. Now, beat it, you little imp. I told you. Daddy. Oh, Joni, I, <laughs> I forgot you were here. Daddy, have you flipped your lid? <laughs> no, no, I, I was only thinking. Poor mother. No, oh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I should have given in to her, that I, I should have stayed at that motel, that I'm unreasonable, stubborn, selfish. Joan, that's a nasty thing to say. But I didn't say anything. That's no excuse. <laughs> Maybe you're right anyway. You're not selfish, Dad. Oh, yes, yes, I am. I'm, I'm selfish and considerate and thoughtless. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, you are what? Uh, we were arguing about whether or not I was selfish, inconsiderate, and thoughtless. Which side was I on? <laughs> Which side? Why, you were... Joni! Joni, look! Where? It's straight, straight, straight ahead! I recognize that curve! Ha, 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 ha! They said I couldn't find the house, eh? Well, we showed them. Hey, I recognize that signboard, too. Which one? Yeah, right there. See? It says, when you get around this bend, you will find your journey's end. <laughs> oh, fine. Shrunk's Motel. <laughs> We're sure showing them. Hey, there's Mother. Mother and Susan yeah, and Uncle Bill. I see them. I see them. There you are. Well, what's the trouble, Muriel? What are you doing out here? Didn't Mr. Shrunks have a vacancy? In his head, he had a vacancy. In both heads, it's a duplex. <laughs> know where our house is, Jim? Just two miles straight back on this road. Yeah, that's where she is. And you mean you knew it all the time? Yep. Well, for gosh sakes, why didn't you tell me when I asked you the first time? You shouted at me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I know, but well, I, I... I'm old. <laughs> it ain't polite to shout at somebody that's old. But great Scott, man... See there, you're shouting again. <laughs> what? You should apologize. Apologize? All, all right, I, I apologize. Oh, that's all right. No apology necessary. <laughs> oh, come on, everyone. new home at last. Oh, that darned old fool letting us run around all night looking. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Just a second. I'll carry the brandy if you Jim. don't mind. Jim, please take mighty good care of it. Oh, I'm glad we're here. I'm freezing. 
I can't wait to get in. Well, I've got the key right here. Well, in we go. <laughs> hey, look out. <laughs> it's a wolf. <laughs> Well, certainly interesting. What do you do when you got a wolf in your house? It's not a wolf. It's that little surprise you cooked up with the agent. A good oh, farm dog, a yeah. watchdog to take care of us, to keep strangers away. Ah, well. Well, he seems to be a very good watchdog, doesn't he? Really on his toes. Yeah, uh, how do you suppose we go about convincing him we're not strangers? I'll handle it. Step aside, Jim. What? Down, sir! <laughs> Bill, you did it! Hey, you want to buy a dog? I just want a drink. No. <laughs> Hold it now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've been looking forward for a long time to carrying my wife over the threshold. I don't want to be carried over the threshold. Look, I've had about all I can take for one day. It's a time-hallowed and beautiful custom with millions of tender associations. And I'm going to carry you over that threshold if I have to fracture you in the process. Oh, put me down. Right, look, I don't want to be carried over the threshold. Yeah. Well, that's just too darn bad about you. I'm going to carry you over. Stop kicking, will you? Hey, look, look out! The brandy! Oh. Oh. Jim, put her down and carry me over. <laughs> My brandy. My bottle of brandy. Oh, look, it's not wasted. Rover likes it. <laughs> oh, let's just go inside. Now, let's not talk about it. Where's the light switch? Somewhere on the wall. Oh, boy. Isn't that clever? <laughs> so much better than having them on the ceiling like most people. <laughs> Which wall? Somewhere on that wall. Oh. Well, that's better. I'd like to fire someone. You got a match? Bill, give me a match. Let me see. I couldn't have used up my last match, could I? Yes, I could. <laughs> well, maybe it's just as well. I'm in a mood to set fire to the place anyway. Jim, you wouldn't. Well, why not? Now, what's the use of kidding ourselves? The house is jinxed. Even the land is jinxed. When we were digging for a well, we had to go down 300 feet before we found water. And when we were just excavating for a foundation and didn't want water, we struck it at 12 feet. <laughs> I haven't drawn a happy breath since we first saw the property. This isn't our home. It's just a house. It hasn't been fun building. It hasn't been fun moving into it. I'm afraid it's not going to be fun living in it. Muriel, let's just chuck it. Chuck it? Our own house? Yeah, I'll find some chump to unload it on. Oh, Jim. No, I mean it. I mean it. Th th this house doesn't like us. Oh, gosh, we had such a nice, warm, wonderful feeling in the car way back there, and as soon as we got within ten miles of here, it vanished, bluey, like that. Well, without that feeling, this place means less than nothing to me. Let's chuck it. Let's chuck it and go back to the city. If, if that's the way you want it, Jim. That's the way I want it. We'll go back in the morning. We'll find a hotel and... What are these? What are what? These boxes over here. Kuiper's Fifth Avenue. That's a hat shop. Have you bought a new hat? Open it and see. Muriel, look, we're in debt, so did you have to... It's a man's hat. A Tyrolean. Hey, a real Tyrolean. <laughs> With a brush in it. For me? Sure, for you. Susan and Joan say their allowances for the last three months. Oh. They wanted you to wear it while... while striding over your acreage. Oh. <laughs> Don't you like it, Father? Like it? Oh, sure I like it. I... I love it. And if you're not in too big a hurry to leave, you... you might look in that... that brown box. Huh? Gee. I, I didn't buy it at a store, either. Rod Fairchild gave it to me in exchange for my gold compact that his wife wanted. Jim, that coat was at Narvik with the British fleet. Oh, boy. A convoy coat. <laughs> Muriel. Muriel, you're the best friend a boy ever had. Thanks. Gee, what a wonderful coat. Nice big pocket. Hey, look. 
Look what's in the pockets. Matches. Real match. Light the fire, Daddy. Light the fire. I'll do it. Uh, just a moment, Bill. I'll do it. Light your fire, Jim. Uh, hey, look. Ah, uh, it's taking hold. Come on, everybody. Now gather around. Me too? You? Yeah, I guess so. Why not? <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> Gee, it's our fire. Our own fire. Just think it. It belongs to us. Well, there's something else that belongs to you. That last package is from me. From you? <laughs> oh, gee, Bill, you... You shouldn't have, really. Well, I know now, but I didn't then. <laughs> hey! A pipe rack. And a tobacco humidor. Bill, I, I've never seen one like this. Well, if you have, I've been cheated. That once belonged to President Millard Fillmore. No. Lift the lid of the humidor, why don't you? Go ahead. Oh, oh now, isn't that one? <laughs> no President Fillmore's favorite song. There's no place. Oh, gee, that's pretty good. Golly, home. Have you ever realized the beauty of that word? I didn't until today. It, tell you something. You know, a house is it, just a house. And it's not really a home until it's filled with a certain kind of feeling. That the kind that's, that's in this room right now. Rover, get away from that brandy! Miss Blanding, that's quite a story. And I can see why this dinner is an occasion. Yes, Maud. All that happened just a year ago today. <laughs> oh, say, it's getting late. If we don't eat that lamb pretty soon, it's going to bag its way out of the oven. I know. Oh, dear. I don't know why those men can't ever be on time. We work, knock ourselves out to get everything just right, and where are they? Oh, men. My sentiments exactly, men. As far as I'm concerned, they can take every single man in the world and... And what? Nothing. I just remembered I got a date Saturday night. <laughs> Hello? Uh, hello, darling. Uh, I'm afraid Bill and I won't, uh, won't be there on time. You're already not here on time. What happened? Did the car break down? No, 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 no. The car's running fine, dear. Well, then? Uh, Muriel, uh, I, I seem to have... Uh... Well, you see, Bill didn't know the turn either, and, well, the fact of the matter is we, we, uh, we're, uh... Is, uh, lost the word you're groping for? Yes. <laughs> where are you now? Yeah, oh, Bill and I'll be right home, dear. But where are you now? Shrunk's Motel. <laughs> Tune in next week, same time, same station, for Mr. and Mrs. Blandings, starring Robert Cummings and Jane Wyatt, with Larry Keating as Bill Cole. Featured in tonight's cast were Elvia Ullman, Cliff Arquette, Patty King, Ann Whitfield, and Clarence Strait. Bob Lamont speaking. Tonight's show was written by Charles Stewart and Mort Lockman. Produced and directed by Warren Lewis. <laughs>